2023 has been an interesting year for rise of kingdoms it's had some ups and it's also definitely had some downs the game got some new content throughout the year and we also got our hands on the new ancient greece civilization which was long awaited we got our hands on new kvk stories and we also got a couple of really cool new commanders that changed the meta and for those of us in season of conquest we got our hands on liu che for free for the five-year anniversary which is the first time that lilith has ever done that before but in this video i want to take a moment to look forward towards 2024 and give you guys five things that i really hope we see in the coming year but first what's going on guys cheers now the first thing that i want to talk about is a new feature that is confirmed to be being worked on by the developers and you may have actually forgot about it but if i remember correctly they announced this at the same time as the graphical overhaul and also when they gave us some hints at the new mayan civilization or i mean i should be clear here okay they actually didn't tell us what the new civilization is but i think a lot of a lot of the evidence suggests that the new civilization for summer of 2024 is going to beat the mayans okay of course that is all speculation but one thing that they announced during this reveal was that they were working on a fishing implementation in rise of kingdoms they are adding fishing to the game okay and that is literally all that they said they didn't say anything else about it they didn't say if it would be you know something that you could do in the like in the open world like on the map they didn't say if it would be a mini game that comes around uh, temporarily they didn't say if it was going to be implemented into the game permanently right they didn't say anything other than they're working on adding fishing to rise of kingdoms and a lot of people kind of like raised the, some question marks right like what do you mean fishing like this is a game about war like why are we adding fishing right but the first thing that i want to talk about in this video is what fishing could be in rise of kingdoms okay because i think a lot of people feel like some of the events in the game are recycled a, a bit too frequently okay and I, and I get that right um golden kingdom comes around pretty often they actually just refreshed golden kingdom a few months ago which i actually have grown to enjoy i think it's quite interesting but you know things like the holiday events and stuff like that uh, they're, they're very you know they're recycled uh, you know throughout the year and so what i want to see from fishing coming to rise of kingdoms is some sort of relaxing mini game that is always available in rise of kingdoms i don't want it to be like for example traveling okay traveling in rise of kingdoms is literally just clicking this button 20 times and skipping the cutscenes, right i mean let's just be real that's what people do nobody reads the cutscenes, at least not after the first time and maybe you actually go through and recycle the garbage that you get from this but a lot of times people just spam this button and then you know a month later they'll go through and you know recycle all their different armaments and that's how that goes so the traveling system isn't really anything to be honest with you it's, it's kind of nothing i don't want to see that for the fishing system okay whatever the fishing whatever fishing is i would like it to be a new sort of mini game in rise of kingdoms that i mean here's here's what i'll tell you guys come to this travel screen in, in game go into your game right now pull up the travel screen turn on the music the music's actually pretty good here the music is good they added music to travel and they also added music to the tavern and i like the music and i think that there's an opportunity to have a mini game that is relaxing and interesting but i also would like to see fishing be something or uh, be a way for players to get their hands on materials and blueprint fragments uh, and i'm not talking about green blueprint fragments or blue blueprint fragments i'm talking about legendary blueprint fragments and legendary materials eventually okay i don't want to see any building speed ups okay i don't want to see any research speed ups i don't want to see any uh, food ten thousand food oh we're getting ten thousand food i want it to be a relaxing new thing a brand new thing where you can have a chance at getting some blueprints now i'm not saying give away a bunch of stuff for free obviously they're not you know they're not going to do that it makes sense that they're not going to do that but i just want to see a new relaxing mini game in the game that is completely different than anything we've seen before and has a reasonable method to obtain things that actually matter in the game okay i can't tell you how many times you know i open a silver key and then i watch the summoning animation of dragon lancer I have to watch an animation for Dragon Lancer full summon, bro. I can't begin to tell you how useless that is. It's a waste of time. So whatever fishing is, I hope that it is something new and fresh 
and isn't an entirely new system in the game and we're going to talk about systems a little bit later next let's talk about some commanders that i want to see come into rise of kingdoms in 2024 and as you can see on the screen here i actually used ai to generate some concept art for commanders in rise of kingdom so this is one example of hattori hanzo here's another one and like look obviously this looks like ai art it's nothing like insane okay it's nothing incredible but i feel like hattori hanzo is long overdue for rise of kingdoms 100 i feel like there's just generally a lack of japanese historical figures in the game to be completely honest with you guys next i had to generate some vlad the impaler images here okay uh, i think this one's probably a little bit cooler but I feel like Vlad the Impaler as the inspiration for Dracula. I feel like that's just a slam dunk. I feel like that is an awesome historical figure to add into the game that kind of already has some lore around them in real life. And he would be pretty different and unique to some of the other commanders that we see already in the game. As you can see here, mid journey does uh, a couple of different random renders and it's not, it's not perfect. I don't know how he's possibly holding that sword like that, but, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, we got some undertaker vibes over here. This dude's looking a little bit insane but am i crazy to think that he would be a cool implementation into rise of kingdoms next up a young king arthur i feel like king arthur is like such an obvious addition to the game it's kind of shocking that he wasn't in the game when it came out right like we had lancelot lancelot is in the game he's a blue commander okay which by the way is shocking and if any blue commander deserves a prime version it's lancelot and gaius marius but i digress at the end of the day I feel like King Arthur would be a super cool uh, implementation into the game. And some of the detail with this AI art is, is quite good, to be honest with you guys. There's also some other uh, implementations here. Obviously, this is a much younger version, but like we have like this dude over here, down here as well. Uh, there's a, you know, a little bit of a different facial features over here. So yeah, I think that there's 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 something to be said about King Arthur. I think he is obviously historically significant and he's in other games. I'm pretty sure he's in Infinity Kingdom, right? So like, come on, let's, let's get King Arthur in here. And finally, I hope that at some point in 2024, we get Sun Tzu Prime. I would also like to see Osman Prime, okay? And I already made a video about that. And I think that he is a probable candidate for Prime treatment. Obviously, Herman Prime is coming up and we did not expect that at all. But Sun Tzu Prime is a commander that even the developers have acknowledged that the community wants Sun Tzu Prime. So they know that. And I think that they will deliver on that desire. And personally, now that we know with Herman Prime that the Prime version of a commander can have the same you know main talent tree as the epic version i hope that they make sun tzu prime an infantry commander that is basically guan yu 2.0 that's what i want to see i want to see his active skill be the same active skill as liu che except instead of a march speed debuff i want it to be a three second silence okay that's what i want to that's the minimum i want to see because y'all know infantry you know i mean liu che is incredible in the open field and my two infantry armies that i'm running right now are performing super well and this is like the first time in my ride of kingdoms life that i feel like infantry actually have two solid open field armies but i'd love to replace my Tarek with like an op just crazy dude that would be awesome and i hope that we see it in 2024. the third thing on my wish list for 2024 is something beyond the season of conquest we have been in season of conquest for years now and there's really nothing wrong with the kvk stories in fact some of the newer kvk stories like storm of stratagems have actually been quite interesting i know people have pros and cons about like battle of orleans and stuff like that but one thing is for sure the stories that they've released this year are decent i think they're fine but as i mentioned in my video where i talk about the current state of rise of kingdoms i think that there are just way too many systems in the game right now we have the equipment plus the iconic tier system we have crystal technology we have armaments and formations and we also have like the museum relics and all that other stuff and there's just a lot of stuff that you have to focus on right now and i feel like you know when i first started playing rise of kingdoms over five years ago at this point the game was much more simple it was about building up your city and then how you as a player integrate into your greater kingdom and how you interact in kbk right and also partake in like Ark of osiris stuff like that and that was really cool and i think as a player that's been continuously playing for five years i've been able to keep up with these new systems but it's obvious to me that you know there's just too many and so for me i feel like one way that they could sort of shrink the gap between free-to-play players and those that spend a little bit in the game is to have something past the season of conquest 
that effectively makes some of those systems fall to the wayside and and i don't know how that how they could do that i don't know you know if there would be maybe you could choose between the season of conquest story and a classic story like you know kvk one two and three like if you wanted to go back and play that for example i haven't played a kvk one in literally years since the first kvk1 okay so like for me that would be interesting or kvk2 for example and i know you can migrate back but everybody knows that that really hurts the progression of your account so like i'm not gonna obviously do that plus i like the people that i play with and it would be cool to play those you know those classic style stories with the people that i like to play the game with right i shouldn't have to migrate kingdoms just to experience that stuff again and so perhaps they can sprinkle in some some kvks that aren't season of conquest that don't have crystal technology and maybe they don't have some of the you know more advanced you know systems like armaments and all this other stuff and like surely they'll have to monetize it in some way i understand that this game you know it, it, it they need to make money somehow okay and that's that's why crystal tech has been in the game for so long but i just feel like they've kind of hacked on a bunch of different systems into season of conquest and it's just not the same game that it was that I when I back when I started playing and in some ways it's better than the game I started playing for sure but in other ways it's a bit more bloated it's a bit more system heavy and I think that that really drags down the experience for a lot of players and I think it's time that as we look into 2024 and we look at the graphical upgrade and we look at you know some of the big changes coming to the game perhaps this is the moment where we can look over the horizon and what what's beyond season of conquest like this doesn't have to be the end of game it can be this could be one step towards the next thing and hopefully that next thing doesn't have a million different systems in it number four on my wish list kind of builds off of number three and that is a more streamlined experience for brand new players i think that the jump from you know the start of a brand new server and the new player experience and then you go into kvk1 and it's like this big deal and then you hit kvk2 and then you see in kvk3 is when you start to get access to some of these newer commanders right and i think that you know for a new player it gets to be really really daunting when you first enter into season of conquest when you have all these like the game just explodes wide open with all these systems that we just talked about and i feel like you know the first seven months of a new player's experience here in rise of kingdoms is kind of spent in anticipation of the end game now of course new players have a lot to do they have to get their city to 25 and they have to get the tier 5 units and all that other stuff but like in the commander department there's really nothing to do right like yes you have YSG and I think YSG is definitely still usable in rise of kingdoms to this day if I were to run two armies two archer armies right now YSG would be in those two right so like he's a perfectly good commander even in season of conquest but I feel like there just needs to be more for those players to work on in the commander department so that way they're like ready for season of conquest and they don't feel like they've been kind of handicapped for the first seven months and there's definitely some growing pains when you enter into season of conquest right like you walk into season of conquest and some players have like you know they're maxed out ysg they're maxed out alexander the great and they think that they're going to be able to do something and the reality is that they're not right like you really can't do anything with that anymore which is unfortunate and i don't remember who commented it so i do apologize if they're watching this i hope they'll let me know in the comment section below but they commented one of their suggestions for the early game of rise of kingdoms would be for the developers to change YSG to a leadership commander and shift all of his all of his stats to just be universal, right? So instead of this, you get 100% bonus attack, just all attack for all whether it's archer, cavalry, infantry, whatever, and make his relic also universal, right? Give him just universal troop defense and call it a day, right? And I think that that would be interesting, right? Because then you could literally and people already kind of use YSG as a universal commander, right? Like let's just be real. But if you did that, then he would be kind of like uh, a much better version of Mehmed, right? Like Mehmed is like that guy. Mehmed is the universal secondary commander that you can get from the beginning of the game. But what if you had YSG sort of fill that role as well? Well, then all of a sudden he becomes even better for all troop types, right? That's just a little bit of a bump. And we already know that like, sure, okay, he wouldn't be broken and, and definitely he would still not be as good as Season of Conquest commanders, but at least, you know, you could use him for any troop type and you would have that circular aoe and it would be fine right that's just like one little tweak that they could make and that would be super easy for them to do right like straight up that'd be super easy and i'm just using that as an example of you know ways that they could streamline the early game so that way when players new players get to season of conquest they feel like they're ready for it right because you know players like me who've been playing for five years i have five years worth of content 
that players have to catch up with like i mean i have a lot of commanders i have so many commanders expertise that i'm literally never going to use again and those commanders you know are, are better than what new players are starting off with right like i can walk into a fight with like my you know alex with my herald right that's an that is an outdated army at this point and yet it's still probably better than what a lot of people are entering into season of conquest with and i think that that says a lot and if i'm being real with you guys i feel like the new player experience right now is probably more important than the end game experience and what do i mean by that well like the game needs to attract more new players to replace players who have stopped playing over the years and a lot of times like the mega whales who've been playing for five years like they at, at some point it becomes kind of impossible to continue to appease them right like you know what more could they possibly spend on and i mean it's kind of like milk and a cow right like you've already got all you've got six figures of their money already like you already got the money so why i mean why do you have to get like i mean this sounds awful but like why do you have to keep appeasing them you already took all their money right so you kind of want to attract new whales new new people to spend new money and you know i think the current new player experience makes that very very hard it is a very uphill battle and like look i'm, I'm not stupid i know that there's players like baba who still spend a million dollars a year in the game right and they're old players and like you obviously want to appease, appease them surely right surely but what if you could get two or three or four new babas right like that would be that would be a game changer and number five on the list is a new commander in the expedition shop i feel like i've said this every year for the past three years but ethelfled is outdated she is very outdated yes players still use her for the debuff of course they do okay they still use her to barb chain of course they do i get it right i get it let's just be real here okay uh, in season of conquest ethelfled is it's rough man it's rough it's rough to use an ethel flood her damage factor is 800 let me just remind you it is 800 okay in a world where we have commanders like liu che who's dealing a five target 2250 unbelievable okay so i think we need to replace ethel flood and what i would like to see is maybe once you hit season of conquest you then get a choice between ethel flood or something else right because in that way you can then first of all you can continue to get ethel flood sculptures if you want to exchange them for credits in your alliance shop right for a lot of players this is a good source of credits for them and i don't want to take that away from them but for people like me like i don't need those credits to be honest with you guys so i really ethel flood is pointless to me and i think that it would be nice for free-to-play players if they got another new legendary now liu che was great because everyone got him for free but you only got 10 sculptures right so you only got the unlock of him for free which like really that doesn't really move the needle i'd like to see a ethel fled 2.0 okay put a new beautiful woman in the shop as a legendary like universal leadership skill damage support whatever you want to do okay that's fine and give the free-to-play players something new to look forward to because ethel fled isn't just a commander she's a reason for new players to log in every day and that's a thing that like people forget about ethel fled when you're still working on her like as a new player it's exciting because every day you log in you're guaranteed to get a legendary commander which is a big deal right that keeps you engaged with the game but once you max her out and once you realize that she's not that great like in season of conquest she kind of loses a lot of her her luster you know it's you lose that incentive to log in and of course those players might be fully you know dedicated to the game at that point so they don't need that incentive to log in but i mean it can't hurt right it can't hurt and what does it really cost uh the developers of the game to you know pay to make artwork for, for a new commander i really i'm genuinely asking i don't know but i can't imagine that it costs like five figures to implement a new commander i can't imagine it would be that expensive right it's not that expensive you pay an artist you pay someone to animate the figure and then you you know you have the dev team figure out a kit that's not too broken and you throw them in the shop for for free and you just get uh, give players a new reason to log in and be excited and feel like they're making progress and i think that that's important players want to feel like they're making progress and especially that's important for free to play players and for new players and this could also fit in with my previous thing that i've been asking for which is you know a streamlined experience for new players what if there was a replacement for alpha flood that was actually good that worked in season of conquest and you could use them effectively but if you're an older player maybe you don't really need them and it doesn't really make a difference to you right so it kind of just would level that playing field where these new players have a new commander that they can start to work on as a legendary for free to play anyway guys i would love to hear from you in the comment section below what do you want to see 
from rise of kingdoms in 2024 i think honestly the developers probably want to hear from you as well right they want to know what the players actually want and for me i think a new sort of relaxing but refreshing experience with fishing would be really cool a lineup of insanely cool commanders we've been asking for for years would be nice a new less complicated end game with a streamlined experience for new players and a brand new free legendary that is my list of five wishes for rise of kingdoms in 2024 guys while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace